mama grow me real good My mama grow me real fine yeah. My mama give me everything me need in life She said be a real divine My mama sweet like sugar Nine months belly pain She strong like our My mama she never falter She alone know the pain all is over with over My mama full up a structure Tell you about my mama Mama na, mama na, mama na na Sarania give me that raja I make me tell you about my mama Mama na, mama na, mama na na My queen, me give you my honor My talkie there, my talkie me, you don't care mama Watch out that, okay mama In a rock out that, mama I want to step to your mama, I outside with your mama, cause I rock with your mama, versatile, I know school alone me get me teaching in this life, I feel represent me mom she grow me right, so me I beg your father God protect her life.
that is done to honor the life of Veronica Skinner will be done in a way that is fitting and respectful. We ask you to continue to give strength, courage to all of us that mourn that we can face the days ahead. Continue to be with us, we pray. We ask all this in the name. But in your love name, Jesus. And amen. You may be seated. I'm going to invite at this time Tanisha Thomas. She's coming with the first reading. And she'll be followed by Dave Richards' grandson with a song. And right after Dave, I'm going to invite Dave Brown, Brown to follow with the second reading. So you'll just come in that order. Greetings, everybody. Praise God, everybody. Before I knew my name, before I drew a breath, He was making ways for me. Now and every day, in each and every step, He is making ways for me.
crafting garments, fostering both connections and a skill that would shape her future. Veronica began to make clothing for children, which she sold in the downtown Kingston areas. During her entire life, she was her own boss, an entrepreneur in her own rights. Helping others was another passion of Veronica, who also found time to do voluntary work with Father Holon and other aspects of human services. And I guess, as we see members of that ministry here, giving their last respect. This was done through the various churches she attended, helping those who were physically and mentally challenged. While selling goods on Spanish Town Road, Veronica met Michael's father, as Michael and Richard, there. This was the start of motherhood for her. Michael's father would later migrate, and in the tapestry of family and motherhood, Veronica's story unfolded with the births of her first three sons, Michael, John, whom we call Tony, and Sigismund, which we call Bill. And during this time, the family lived on Bond Street. She found love with Moses Monroe, welcoming two girls, Sharon, who we call Joy, and Carol, into their lives. Veronica unfortunately experienced loss, but her unbreakable spirit endured even the heartache of losing a baby boy. Unyielding in the face of challenges, Veronica's determination and love for her family were evident. She faced adversity with courage, and body resilience, and a fierce commitment to providing for her children. For those who don't know that, Auntie Bonnie was very strong-willed and stubborn at times. But she also had this enormous heart and a wonderful sense of humor. Auntie's laughter was infectious. And her heart was immense. She had this unique ability to make everyone feel like they were the most important person in the world. That's my auntie. When it comes to cooking, one of my earliest memories of auntie was that of her one pot cooking. There wasn't much in the house, but she knew how to put together a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and make the most delicious meal you could ever have. A finger or two of green bananas, a little piece of yam, some rice, a little chicken noodle, a little piece of pork, and a piece of sawfish. And voila, a delicious meal. That's my auntie. And think about her, she will never let you leave hungry. So I grew up with my grandma. I had to go to the market every week, sometimes twice a week. And every time I go to Carnation Market, I have to stop by Auntie. And even if there is nothing in the house, Auntie is not going to let me leave hungry. She had such a kind and giving heart. When I was growing up, Auntie didn't have much. In fact, she had very little. But you would never know as she was always giving. Even if it was only a sweetie, you were bound to get something from her. When Auntie started traveling on her return, you can bet your bottom dollar 
she had something for everyone. And don't think she forgot anyone. Nieces, nephews, grandchildren, grandnieces, grandnephews, you name it. I never know that I don't think there is anyone in the world. I don't think there is anyone in the world that can pack a suitcase or a barrel like Auntie. Because she had to send something for everyone. She was that kind of a person. An industrious woman. She knew how to turn her hand and make fashion. Veronica's entrepreneurial endeavors including selling fruits, sweets, biscuits at her plate, and at the school entrance of Denton Primary and St. Anne's Primary, where she demonstrated her resourcefulness and dedication to her family's well-being. She also got into making clothing for dolls and was eagerly sought out by all the little girls in the care for her service with a smile making dresses for your dogs and having conversation and if she and them were the same age. That's auntie. Known for her generous heart, she formed connections effortlessly. However, it was clear she gave away more than she sold. All she needed to hear was, auntie, we can't get this. He would give freely to anyone who was in need, especially children. Some would say that this was a blessing. Some would probably say it was a curse. Veronica's auntie Bunny, late sister Violet, and used to be my mom, as well as Violet's family became her mentors. For them, she would always go the extra mile and ocean. There was nothing she wouldn't do to make us happy. She had a love for church. Deeply rooted in spirituality, Veronica's love for church life was expansive, transcending denominations. During her time she attended any church, she felt like visiting Adventist, Catholic, Pentecostal, Church of God, you name it, it didn't matter. She just loved to go. Her church Bible and photos of all her children, grandchildren, even great grandchildren were constant, ready to be shared with anyone showing interest. There are two stories I'd like to share. One is from her son Michael, and one from her granddaughter Anika. Her son Michael, he often remembers how he would always get into trouble with her mother because she would always wait until grandma left for church before going to kill one of her chickens and cook it for dinner. And now was Michael had to hide the church ones that he had asked to collect just because she had no problem taking out the amount she needed to buy and cook food for the family. Each time he completed her response to him was always, I don't want to die from hunger. Her granddaughter Anika says, Auntie would see to give away everything. And when asked why, she would say, Give with love, give with a willing heart. She was a prayer warrior, and you probably know that. And was always praying for every family and friends, calling each by name. And he I listened to Auntie pray, she don't leave out no name. She was that kind of a person. Veronica, Auntie Bunny, is survived by her brother, Uncle Sam, Samuel Skinner, sitting at the front. Five children. Michael, Tony, that's John, Sigismund, that's Bill, Sharon, that's Joy, Carol, 18 grandchildren, Dave, Andrew, Jillian, Alice, Jaden, Amanda, Annika, Tanisha, Kelvin, Shanti, 
Ashley, Antoine, Miriam, Sharon, Christopher, Shane, Mark, and Damian. She's also survived by nine great grandchildren. One great, great, great grand, which is Sarah Faye. Antoine is preceded in death by her sister, Violet Collins, and also her nephews, Victor Dose and Richard Portions. Losing Auntie is a tremendous loss, and it's going to take time for us to heal. But we find comfort in knowing that she lived a full life, surrounded by people who loved her and whose lives was touched by her, her spirit. And her love will always live within us. Today, we celebrate a life rich in love, resilience, and generosity. Veronica, a.k.a. Antibody. Of the temple of the Most High. 
God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. She shall help her. God shall help her. And that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God, the God of Jacob is our refuge. In Jesus' name we say. Amen. Thank you, Shante. At this time, we'll be collecting an offering on the inviting Mrs. Barclay to lead us in this song, He Lives.
doing one more? Oh, I'll be done.
was amazing. I don't know if you were listening to the words of that song, but it was specifically written for her. Just for her. And it tells of the life of this woman to, to have worked and served one of the most benevolent societies in Jamaica. Father Holon and friends, what a woman. I never met her, but I can tell you today I have. An amazing life she must have been. Thank you, Lord. At this time, we're going to allow one or two, three the most, open tributes. So if you are burning, just for a minute or two you have, uh, just to share if you feel like you don't want to leave this day without saying something about Miss Veronica. All right, could you come now to the most three? Personality, 
always praying and covering people, trying to help them as much as you can. So my family, I want you guys to remember to stay together. It shouldn't take death to bring us together. I want us to spend more time together because we are more than capable of doing it. Look at each other, look at everybody here. We have to stay together because that's what grandma would have wanted. No fighting, peace. I love you guys.
It means the day that you were born, an assignment was put in train. So you came into the world to fulfill an assignment. If there was not an assignment on your life, you would never have been born, except me. Maybe I was born to come good looking. Hot boy, is it? And so did they ever come and hot? Rude. But it's not the good looks for me there. Me would have liked in the same. So, well, you were born with purpose. You were born with an assignment. You have an assignment on your life. Because every man born was born with purpose. You are here to fulfill the purpose for which life was given to you. And therefore the most important question to ask and to discover about life is to ask the question, what is my purpose? Many of us have lived and never asked the question. So why are you here? One man just a Levi. One man a Levi. Just a Levi. Just a Levi. A Levi. A Levi. A Levi. The eye must know why the eye lived. The eye must consider because the life was given with purpose and therefore it means you will have to give an account at the end of the life for the purpose for which you were given the life. Veronica, lying here, we have to give an account of her life, what she did with it, how she did it. Did she fulfill the mission given or did she work on somebody else's assignment? I was happy to hear what you said. Many people listen, but they never quite understood. And when we begin to get clear of two years ago, how's that? She had to be um, John. Sister was saying, come on, stick together. 
Don't let the fact that grandma or mama, grandma, cousin, auntie gone, let me stick it together and live the love for she live. What am I saying? You feel the what? Nobody not talking to you like you like already. <laughs> you stick it together and live the love for she live. Live love life. People do your things for you, then let it go, man. Don't hold it. Let it come. Let it go. Don't hold it. Because if you hold it, then you want to go get soaked. Just easy yourself. Let it go, man. Make we walk together when you Love. Make we so love, man. Make we so love. This reggae month, this and just don't celebrate. Reggae month, open right to church on Sunday morning. And then run the wicked ready. One love. One love. So if you run it, make we see it together and right? what? Feel our right and love, make the love run, man. Love the love, run the love. I saw we have to do it. That's what Veronica understood. That's why she kept telling you all the time. Give it. With love. Just give it. So she had to do it. All it is our last speech here. She had peace and peace. Somebody have to get peace by that. She was a giver. Because she understood what purpose. She understood what life is about. Purpose. And she knew her purpose. That she was saying, if nobody else does it, you know who have to do it? Come on, talk to me. Maybe when you have to do it. If only no one do it, we are sure no how to do it. But if only no one do it, you have to work that out. But me have to do it because we born for this. We do what? We born for this. What are you doing with your life that you can say we born for this? Most of us living and age is taking us, and we still don't know why we have life. There's a friend of mine who used to say, the worst thing is to have life and don't know why you have it. Why do you have life? Why are you here on the earth? What are you here to do on the earth? What are you doing with your life? It was given in purpose. Therefore, spend the rest of your life in the active pursuit of fulfilling that purpose. So the day a man is born, it is purpose that was set on course. The day a man is born, his assignment was set. A new assignment was birthed into the world. And so really what you could begin to call a baby is assignment. And once they're born, his assignment began. Assignment. So you got to live to fulfill your assignment. And this is what I'm saying to you, this idea. We go out of your soul. You know, get vexed into the noises. You know, 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 the fact that you are still here, that is a certainty. Come on, you believe that? Are you certain you are here or are you not sure if it's you? Yeah. You're certain that you are here. So the certainties of life, the things that are sure, the things that can be established as facts, the things that can be calculated and determined and seen and touched and felt and experienced, they are certain. And I want to talk to you for the next few minutes then and leave you with the background I made for you on the certainties of life. And I want to suggest to you that there are really three primary things that is certain about life. Most other things is not certain, is perhaps. You hope so. You would love it. You like it. You hope it happens. You are working for it. You are trying to obtain it. But it is not a certainty. But there are some things that are certainties. And that means you can't do anything about them because it is what it is. So you have to deal with it for what it what is. You have to deal with it for what it is. 
So I want three certain things. Let me give you a few more. What we have to do is three primary ones, which I am certain that they are certainties of life. And so once you are born, there are these three certainties that is inevitable for your life. They are inescapable. And so therefore you must reckon with the certainties of life. You can play with the paraxis, but don't play with the certainties. Make sure you understand the certainties and apply yourself to the certainties of life. The one of three certainties of life that I need with you this afternoon as you are here. Number one, once you are born, the first certainty I want to tell you that is certain is that if you're born, you're going to grow. Come on. Everything that born that has life what? Grows. If you have life, it grows. If it's not growing, something is wrong. As a matter of fact, it is going to die. And if it hasn't died, it doesn't matter what the size look like, as long as life is in it, it means that growth is taking place. Because growth means activity that is happening on the inside of it that keeps it alive. It grows. And so because it grows, then the uncertainty is that everything that has life, everything, once you're born, growth is going to take place. And it means that you must eat to live. You must what? So therefore, a certainty of life is that you are, you must eat. If you think about stop eating. That's a certainty of life. You must have a promise to those who do what's right. But let's talk. You ready to talk? I'm going to tell you what you're saying. Very little talk, man. Many of you kind of look sad when you see your team. But cheer up yourself, man. Smile at now. Yeah, smile at now. Smile at now. Help yourself. Yeah, smile at now. Come on. We're going to talk life. Yes. It's your turn. 
But you see the master call me and, and now I'm resting here. Yes, I crossed over to glory. And you and to you all I say, just stay in the hand of Jesus and we'll meet again someday.
Circle. <laughs> and we intend to stay a power circle. And everybody here, I'm going to encourage you to be a prayer warrior. Yeah. Grandma used to wake up and pray. She used to pray for everybody, the neighbor, the sister. And I invite you to put prayer in your life. None of my son are hear me, but I want to start praying with my son. I want to start holding hands and pray with you. I want to teach what my grandmother left on me to you. Because we're praying, but we're not praying out my grandmother with you. So you might see me wake you up 3 o'clock some mornings when it reach me. You're going to get up like she used to. <laughs> Remember to pray, everybody, and thank you for being here. Yeah. Too early. <laughs> <laughs> she said 3 o'clock too early. Your mother didn't give us no time. She just do it and we have to get up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Yeah, I'm going to eat that. I'm going to eat Anybody else? Anybody want to say something? Who didn't get to say anything at the service? And want to say something to me? Salt, cheese, and spicy. Anybody want to say something? Anybody else? Going, going, short, sweet, and spicy. Tanisha. Going, going. Grandma, them say me chat too much, you know, I'm too stern, I'm not stopping a grandma. They have to hear me talk. I get things done, right, grandma? Yes. Thank you, Juan. Yes. Anybody else? Going, 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 going. Yeah, yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Music. It seems quite evident 
that at this time it's just her house is here but the real her is actually literally in the presence of God and here all feel that her life is a testimony and her life is inviting everyone else to join her because it is not just a figment of the imagination it's not just a Nancy story or a Disney movie it is something that is actually going to happen and they are given a glimpse in the future in the book of Revelation where the Apostle John when he was taken in a vision to heaven and he saw a couple thousand of years in the future people just sing but for grandma is not a cliche it's a reality her soul is truly resting in peace because of her commitment to Christ so I hope that there will be others of you who before your time comes when your time comes it can be truly said of you that your soul is resting in peace because you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and so therefore as it has pleased the Lord to take unto himself the soul, the spirit, the real her of Veronica Cecilia Skinner we now commit her house back to the ground from where she came dust to dust you can put your roses and your no grave can hold my body down. No grave can hold my body down. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise, no grave can hold my body down. No grave can hold my body down. My body down. No grave can hold my body down. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise, no grave can hold my body down. No grave can hold my body down. No grave. Of glory by and by. I'm gonna walk those streets of glory by and by. I'm gonna walk those streets of glory by and by. I'm gonna walk those streets of glory by and by. I'm gonna walk those streets of glory by and by. I'm gonna walk those streets of glory by and by. I'